Hello friends, how are you? I hope you're doing fantastic. Today I am extremely thrilled because we are going to discuss something absolutely incredible, and that is the season of spring. In the United States, there's a celebration called Easter, which is all about Easter eggs. It is celebrated on Sunday for the Catholic religion. It is Easter Sunday, and on this day, children go out to look for little eggs to hunt little eggs that their parents hide in the garden. Today, I have established a table centered around this topic that I have a great passion for. Because spring brings all the vibrant colors, the much awaited warmer weather, and an abundance of beautiful flowers that fill us with joy and allow us to enhance the beauty of all the indoor and outdoor spaces in our lives. Today I have guests visiting my house and I want to decorate the table to give them a warm welcome and create a pleasant ambiance for their visitation. So I'm going to show you a decorated table and today's menu is going to be a casserole with a potato and egg base, a cheese board accompanied by some croissants and some delicious mimosas. So come and join me because this is going to be really nice. These are the topics that we will be covering on this day. In the description we'll have the play-by-play -play of each one so you can watch it. And in our work table we have the theme of spring, the colors of inspiration, baby blue and pink, supported by green and white. And as secondary colors we will utilize lilac and light yellow. For textures we will utilize linen and grass materials. The day before, I got ready to do the selection of utensils, the floral arrangement, and the napkins. I'll rely on the baby blue placemats and the pink napkins for the colors. As a charger plate, I'll use this transparent one with gold, a white plate, and a small white one with pink. I will mix the glasses, alternating between blues and pinks. And that is how we complete our basic tableware set for our spring brunch gathering. As we defined in the inspiration table, we're going to rely on the grass texture with these little trees, the bunnies, and as an additional decorative element, the Easter eggs. And here is our teapot, along with the bases for the croissants that we are planning to make tomorrow in our kitchen. As a table runner, I will use this artificial grass that complements all the elements we have already chosen and goes really well with the pink and blue flowers with a touch of lilac and yellow. In addition, we also need the glass containers for our mimosa station as well as the tray and the base where the ice and champagne bottle will be placed during the event. And I retrieved my tablecloths in order to have them prepared for tomorrow, the table that I will be utilizing and the glasses to ensure that they are impeccably clean. I will use hydrangeas as flowers. I selected the colors blue, white, and this blue vase. To begin, we check that the talos are completely healthy and remove any extra leaves. This is an important step in preparing to place each of these talos in the vase, ensuring they are in optimal condition for a beautiful arrangement. We measure them to ascertain the duration of time we are going to leave it and the quantity we are going to cut off from each stem. Please remember to make a diagonal cut to enable the stem to have improved airflow, thus allowing the flower to breathe better and extending its freshness. And we begin placing each of the hydrangeas one by one into the vase. This is an extremely uncomplicated arrangement consisting solely of hydrangeas and their small leaves for decoration. And that is how we finalize the arrangement. We are shaping it in such a manner that the blue hydrangeas stay positioned right in the center. And that is all. We already have our beautiful centerpiece vase completed and ready to be showcased. And for our napkin holder, we're going to need these items. To begin, we start by placing our tissue paper in the shape of a diamond. Then, we fold it in half, leaving us with a triangle. Carefully, we put our little egg in one corner 
and begin rolling it up until it is completely covered. This ensures that the information of the little egg is not visible. Now we have it ready and well protected. Moving on to the napkin, we follow the same steps. We put the napkin in the shape of a diamond, then make a triangle and start folding it upwards. Once it's ready, we place the little egg in the middle and bring the strips up to form the little ear. Finally, we tie them with a string or a little rope, making a strong knot to securely hold the little egg in place. With both the tissue paper and napkin wrapped, the little egg is now securely protected and ready to be displayed or gifted. To create a charming napkin holder in the shape of a bunny face with bunny ears, we start by using the flowers from the little bride's veil. Taking the florist ribbon, we carefully wrap it around the stem of the flowers, forming a delightful little bouquet. Ensuring that everything stays securely in place, we wrap the ribbon tightly up to the tip. Once the bouquet is wrapped, we position it between the adorable little ears on the ribbon, creating a cute bow. To complete the napkin holder, we trim any excess string, leaving a neat and tidy finish. Now, we have a lovely bunny-themed napkin holder, perfect for adding a touch of whimsy to any table setting. And we are completely ready for the day of the event. Let us set up the table, prepare the cheese board, make the potato casserole, and set up the Mimin station for the guests to enjoy. Okay, we already have our table, so let's start by placing the table runner, and then we can arrange the placemats. When you possess a tablecloth, you do not require it. Protocol dictates that you should not utilize an individual one, but I am using it to incorporate a burst of color that assists me with this entire spring theme and adds a vibrant touch to the overall ambiance of the space. On top of the placemat, we are going to position the dessert plates. A dish from the menu is also referred to as such, and then you place the flat plate, which is a bigger plate, on the table surface. Afterwards, we carefully position the salad dish, which will serve both as a decorative element and as a container for the pot that we are going to place on top of it. On top of this, the napkin is also going to go. We place the silverware, always with the knife blade facing inward. We have a fork for the stew and a fork for the cheese board. At present, we proceed to place our napkin, which has already been decorated on the table. Let us place it on the topmost part of the small plate. We are already commencing the placement of our little bunnies alongside the Easter eggs, which provide a delightful touch of spring to the table in conjunction with the vase that serves as the centerpiece. All the necessary elements are already in our possession. We simply need to position our glasses. Let us place the glass on the right side, specifically in the upper right portion. Our garden table is now fully prepared, featuring exquisitely delicate and remarkably beautiful touches of spring adorned with gentle pastel tones. The ambiance is truly enchanting, evoking the essence of this vibrant season. We can't help but feel a sense of joy and renewal as we gather around this meticulously arranged table ready to savor the delights of the season. Well, let's proceed at this point with the preparation of our cheese board, which will also serve as a reference to the Easter theme that we are incorporating into our overall presentation. If you're enjoying this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel, give me a like and share it because there are many new things coming to the channel. To begin, we'll choose a table where we'll place all our ingredients. Let's pick strawberries, an orange, kiwis, brie cheese, prosciutto, salami, and cheese. Once we have everything set up, we can start the process of preparing our delicious dish. So let's get started and enjoy the flavors. First, let's position the cheese in the center of the table, accompanied by a brie cheese that I am going to demonstrate a new technique for today. We are going to cut the brie cheese, but not in half, just a small slice on top, just a small slice of the brie cheese. Why? Then we take a piece and shape it into the desired figure. In this case, it is a little bunny. So we apply pressure, lift it up, and remove the piece of cheese. Apart from that, 
We are going to spread some fig jam on it, but just enough so it does not go over the center. We do not want it to spread too much towards the edges. We spread it evenly and then place the top part on so that the contrast in color highlights the bunny figure. Now we move on to the kiwi, which we will first peel with a peeler. It is easier that way so we do not waste too much fruit with a knife. We slice it into little rounds and place them on a plate. Finally, we can garnish the dish with some mint leaves for added freshness. After that, we can serve it and enjoy the delicious flavors. As a finishing touch, we may drizzle some honey on top to enhance the taste even more. We place it on the lid, we put the prosciutto on it and that is how we are getting it ready to continue with our strawberries that we have previously cut. We also place them under the kiwi to then continue with our orange that we are going to leave the peel on. We are going to cut it into thin slices and then cut them in half. This is how we're preparing our dish, layer by layer, with careful attention to detail. Each step is crucial in creating the perfect combination of flavors and textures that will tantalize your taste buds. We have them in halves and we put them on the edges of the board. Now we take the salami and place it at one end of the board next to the strawberries. We then put the little bunny on top of the salami. For the other piece of cheese that we have left, we now place it on the board. After that, we place the jam and the olives in a small bowl. As a final touch, I'm going to put some pieces of mozzarella cheese. To complete the board, we add some dates. Now, we are ready for the egg casserole. To prepare the casserole, I'm going to use containers that I will first spray with oil. Then, I will spread it with a napkin to prevent sticking. Finally, I will add hash brown potatoes a widely used ingredient in the United States. If hash brown potatoes are not available, you can use a base of potato that you have previously cooked and sauteed. This will ensure that the casserole has a delicious and crispy texture. We bake it in the oven for 15 minutes at 175 degrees Celsius. We take it out of the oven, put the egg on top and put it back in for another 15 minutes at 175 degrees Celsius and we have our little egg ready. And thus, we are in the process of finishing our breakfast. And all we need to do is remove our delicious croissants from the oven, set up our lovely mimosa station to ensure that everything is perfectly ready and prepared to warmly welcome and receive our esteemed guests with open arms. For the mimosa season, I decorated ice cubes with flowers. Here's the link to the video showing the step-by-step -step process of how to do it. It's super easy. And, well, we placed our glasses on the tray. I accompanied them with some raspberries. And we have already reached the end of this spring video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and that you subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and keep watching everything that is coming up for you. See you soon.